take a look at that. If you don't have a graph, I'm going to show you one that works pretty well. So a couple of things about the second graph. Zoom in a little bit on this one. There was a couple of you that struggled with the y-axis. Even though our data table showed the first set of numbers being up in, well, at 100, we still need to start our y-axis at 0 and count up to 100. So this is the shape of the graph that we should see. So what does this graph say? What's the comparison between relative humidity and temperature that this graph says? The higher the temperature, the less humidity it can hold. So we could say it like Caleb said it. As temperature increases, relative humidity does what? You see if somebody else besides Caleb got it. As temperature increases, relative humidity does what? Decreases. decreases. Right. So now if you were to go over to your notes, what kind of relationship is that? What's the relationship between relative humidity and temperature? inverse relationship it's exactly it's an inverse relationship so if you're all caught up with do the do you have parts one and two done and you have two graphs we're hopefully now able to see two different relationships the first relationship that we graphed in part one showed us that warm air holds more vapor Part two shows us that as we warm air up, if we're not adding more vapor to the air, relative humidity drops. And I'm going to give you a demonstration here in just a moment that um, will hopefully clarify that a little bit because it's a tricky concept. But I'm curious to know if anybody has questions about uh, do the do part two, especially since quite a few of you still have to get it complete, or Questions about the graph? Let's get those out there right now. Question? Um, so what notes are you talking about? Because I have so many, I can't even, I don't like remember which ones. Our relative humidity notes from I can't remember if it was last week or the week before. They look like this. Started with a review of the water cycle. OK, that's what I thought. Good, good. So our first graph, if you're looking at the screen right now, our first graph summarized this relationship here. A linear relationship that just simply said warm air holds more vapor. The second graph that we just got done looking at demonstrates this relationship here. Relative humidity increases as air temperature decreases and vice versa. Other questions before I attempt to demonstrate that? No. If anything comes up, you can type questions in the comment section, or you can just chime in with any questions. But back here in the kitchen again, I want to show you a couple of different. You have three different glass sizes. Could you agree that those are all different sizes? Pretty simple. So if we just this was something I put into a video last week or the week before. I've kind of lost track of time. 
But if we say that each glass represents different air temperatures and their ability to hold vapor, which one of these would represent cold air, the coldest air? Which one, small, medium, or large? Which one can hold the least amount of vapor? Which one can hold the least amount of water? Small. So here's our cold air. And then this would be warm and this would be hot. So graph number one had a linear relationship between the temperature and the amount of vapor it could hold. Now I'm going to try and demonstrate for you the second relationship. So I'm going to fill up, let's call this 37 degree air. This small glass represents 37 degree air. When is 37 degree air saturated? When is it filled up? So I don't know if you can see that, but it's filled to the top. So what could we say? What's a word that we could use to reference this? Maybe a word from our notes. This is Somebody besides Caleb. What's true of this glass? It's fully saturated? Exactly. It's full. It's saturated. So 37 degree air can only hold so much right now it's full. Let's bring in this medium sized glass. I'll try not to spill anything. And I just want to show you that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to pour from here to here without spilling what do you notice it's not fully saturated right it's i would say a third so this is true of these glasses and it's true of air as well when we warm the air up if we don't add any more vapor to it it becomes less saturated so what I did here is I grew the denominator value. This air can hold more vapor. Our denominator value got bigger. But if I don't increase the numerator value, the actual amount that's in there, then our percentage shrinks. I'll go one more step. Now it looks like there's hardly anything in there. What would happen if I would go back down to a smaller glass than this one and tried to pour this in? What would happen? I don't think I have a small glass. You one. mean if the big jar was full all the way? No, I'm saying here I have this jar of water that started in here. If I go back down, so down to there, I might be losing a little bit. Down to here, we're back to fully saturated. My question is, what would happen if I would try and pour this into a smaller glass? It, it would, would overflow. overflow. It would overflow. That's OK. The same thing happens with air. And that's what this data table is trying to show us, that when air, when uh, the dew point is 37 degrees for the day, if we continue to shrink the size of the glass, if we continue to shrink, the temperature of the air is just going to overflow. And when we say overflow in the sense of um, humidity, what's happening? What's forming? It's condensing. Right. It's not raining, it's condensing. It's forming things like dew and fog, stuff like that, frost sometimes. So I don't know if that helps at all, but the demonstration hopefully shows you 
that warmer air can hold more, but it's the colder air that tends to be higher in terms of relative humidity, because the simple way to say it is that it fills up quickly. This gets soaked quickly. This one takes longer to fill up. Who has questions? Questions? Okay. Because now what you're going to do is you're going to go to your conclusion questions. These are due on Friday, and you're going to answer these. Again, I'm going to demonstrate for you that when you click the link, you go to file, make a copy, call it do the do conclusions followed by your name. Answer all the questions as completely as you can. And then you make a shareable link and submit it to the Edmodo assignment. Questions? Got a question. Okay, so Leah just asked about how do we know if it's going to rain or condense? From regarding all of this stuff that we're doing right now, we're only going to be talking about condensation because the demonstration that I just showed you was done with liquid water, but everything that we're talking about within the scope of this lab or this activity is with gas, water vapor, turning back to a liquid. So it really centers around the process of condensation. Good question. Any other questions? OK. Um, the bulk of the lesson is uh, through. So if you're feeling good about do the do part one and part two, I want you to use those graphs and your notes to answer those three conclusion questions. If you're not done with parts one and two, you need to finish those before you move on to the conclusion questions. So if you're ready to go, you can head off to start working on your conclusions. But if you still have questions or if you want to um, hang around and get started and ask questions as they come up, you can do that as well. Okay, thank you. You betcha. Spence, thank you. Can I get, can, um, Ann Braden, can I get part one from you, please? Hi, guys. Spencer's gone. Braden. There goes Will. There goes Ethan. Braden, can you hear me? 